Okay, welcome back to clip number four, yeah, part four of chapter eighteen. Uh, we, we will continue with where we left off from the previous clip. Yeah, we were looking at the cash budget. Yeah, we were looking at the collection. Now note that the cash budget can be divided into various parts. Yeah, the first part is about collection. Okay, this part uh, is concerned with collection. Yeah? Collection of cash. The second part is about payment of cash, yeah? usually from purchases, yeah? so payment of purchases. And the third part will be other payments, all right? So this will be other payments. And the fourth part here will have uh, the cash balance, the net cash flow and the cash balance. Yeah? So the last part will be this. So there are four parts here. Yeah? Actually, this is not the full cash flow. Yeah? This is the first. Uh, we call the first uh, half yeah, of the cash flow. There will be another portion, yeah, which is the reconciliation or uh, borrowing, yeah? borrowing and investment of uh, cash, yeah? borrowing deficit cash, and also investing surplus cash. Yeah? So that will be included in another part of the cash budget. But this is uh, just the first part, if you like. Yeah? And this first part can be divided into these four portions. Yeah? And we were looking at the collection, yeah? collection from sales. Uh, and in this particular example, we were looking at in the previous clip. Yeah? We were looking that uh, looking at the collection, uh, meaning the uh, average collection period yeah, was thirty days. And therefore, uh, since this is per quarter, yeah? the cash budget is per quarter. Now thirty days will be one third yeah, of the quarter. So the sales made in the last third, yeah, last third means the last one third, last 30 days of the quarter will have to be collected in the next quarter, alright, and therefore two thirds of the quarter will be collected in this quarter, so this is given in the first row, yeah. the first row looks at collection from uh, the current quarter sales, okay, and sales quarter one, the sales made in quarter one will be collected in quarter one, yeah. the second row here looks at the collection uh, made in uh, collected in this quarter but the sales were made in the previous quarter prior quarter sales yeah, and collected in this quarter all right for the first quarter uh, two-thirds of the sales in that quarter will be collected in the same quarter all right and it's two over three multiplied by 500 million will be this yeah, uh, 333 million 333 $33,333.33. Yeah? Right. And the collection from prior quarter will be from the receivable balance. Yeah? For the first quarter, it will be the receivable balance. Beginning receivable. So this will be a portion of previous quarter sales yeah? collected in this quarter. Now, for the second quarter, this will be again yeah? two thirds from 600. Okay. Two thirds from 600 is 400 million. And then the one third from previous, yeah, 500, uh, two thirds will be collected here, one third will be collected here, yeah, the next quarter. Therefore, this one third of 500 million will be 166,000, sorry, 166 million, 666,666 dollars and 67 cents. So when you add these two, you get this much. Yeah? This is the collection form, total collection for quarter two. And so on. Yeah? You can work out the other quarters. Yeah? So this makes up the uh, collection, the first part of the cash budget. Yeah? This is the total collections. This part. Yeah? All right. One more example. Let's take this one. Yeah? Five hundred and thirty-three million. Yeah? How do you get this uh, five hundred and thirty-three million? This will be two thirds from eight hundred million. Okay, that will be five hundred and thirty-three million. Plus one third from 650 million, the sales made in the previous quarter, which is collected in this quarter. Yeah? All right, so that will be the total for uh, total collection for quarter number four. All right, now we move on to the second part of the uh, cash budget. Okay, so we move on to purchases. Yeah? Now these purchases are given, okay, but they are given as 50 percent of. Uh, sales yeah, for the next quarter. Note this, yeah? this is fifty percent of the next quarter sales. Yeah, so therefore, if let's say 
<laughs> let's say the uh, sales yeah, uh, for the second quarter is 600 million. Therefore, you need to purchase the goods earlier, one quarter earlier, yeah, so that you can meet those sales. Yeah. So, for example, if you think 600 million will be the sales for the second quarter, you would go and buy yeah, from your suppliers in uh, one quarter earlier. Yeah. That's the uh, information given in this particular problem. Yeah. So, you purchase one quarter earlier and it accounts, yeah, purchases account for 50% of sales. All right, therefore, it's 300. And these are not actual payments. You yeah, know this, yeah. these are in grey. These are just, these are not cash flows. Okay, these are not cash flows. Yeah? Likewise, this is not a cash flow. Purchases are not cash flows. It's just purchases. Yeah? You don't actually pay for the purchases yet. Okay, so these are purchases. And then you are given this information. Yeah? APP or average payment period yeah? is 45 days. Okay, so if it's 45 days, it means that half of a quarter's Okay, quarter is 90 days. Yeah? Half of the uh, quarter's purchases this quarter will be paid in the next quarter. So any purchases made in the first, 40, first uh, 45 days of the quarter will be paid in the same quarter. Yeah? But uh, any purchases made in the last 45 days of the quarter will be paid in the next quarter. Yeah? So half. Yeah? Therefore, here, the first payment, yeah, current quarter, will be half of 300 million, so 150 million. And the payment for prior quarter sales will be the payable balance. Okay, beginning payable balance. Uh, you are given in the information that it is 125 million. Yeah? So 125 million plus 150 million, you get 275 million. That will be the total purchase payments made in the first quarter. This will be the payment made. Yeah? For the second quarter, so it will be 50% from 325, which is 162.5 million, million, okay, which is this amount. Then another half of 300 million, which will be paid here. You purchase 300 million, 150 will be paid in the first quarter, another 150 will be paid in the second quarter. Always know this, this plus this must always equal to this. Likewise, this plus this must be equal to this yeah? and this plus this must be equal to this likewise here yeah? this plus this must be equal to this this plus this must be equal to this yeah? so that is how you compute the payment yeah? for the second quarter okay we have discussed this let's look at the last quarter yeah, for for uh, illustration purposes yeah? You know that the last quarter, the forecasted sale, uh, purchases will be based on the sales here. Yeah? 50% of uh, 550 will be 275. Yeah? Know this, yeah? So it is uh, 275 million. Then half of this 275 million will be paid in the same quarter. Now the other yeah? 200 million, this 200 million is half of the previous quarter's purchases. Okay, so when you add these two, this will be the total payment made for purchases in the fourth quarter. Alright, so with that, we finish the second part, yeah? the second part of the cash budget. Yeah? This is total uh, purchases payment. Yeah? Then you have other payments. Yeah? You are given this, okay, uh, which is 150. Yeah? The first quarter is 150, the second quarter is 8. 180 these are all given in the problem yeah? so you just uh, include that there and then capital expenditure there's a major capital expenditure you are told that there will be 200 million in the second quarter yeah? 200 uh, million so you just include that the other quarters there are no capital expenditure yeah? and interest and dividend it is 15 million every quarter so you just include that now, this will be your total cash disbursement. Yeah? Total cash disbursement will be total purchase payment plus all this. Yeah? So, this plus the sum of this will be this yeah? 475,000. Sorry, million. Yeah? This 275 million plus 150 million plus 50 million, you get 475. Here it's 21, uh, sorry, 
5 million plus 180 million plus 200 million plus 50 million you get uh, 704.742.5 uh, million sorry about that yeah okay so that's how you get the total cash disbursement so you can compute yeah, the total here okay it will be this plus this plus this you get this one yeah? so with that we finish the even the third part other payments yeah so you can see the first part is the collections okay right not, not that yeah only this part here collections then this will be the payments total payments yeah All right and then here we come to the net cash flow okay this is the fourth part of the cash budget this net cash flow is simply total collections minus total cash disbursements yeah so here you get positive here it's negative why because you receive less and you pay more and yeah? therefore it's a negative yeah? balance here it's positive and here it's positive yeah now <coughs> the next slide and this is just the net cash flow which is simply the difference between this and this collection minus the disbursement payment yeah disbursement means payment yeah all right and the next line here will be the starting cash balance this is given as 80 million yeah? and you want the minimum cash balance it is given in the problem that you want to maintain 50 million yeah? you start with 80 million you do not want the cash balance to be less than 50 million yeah? right so how do you uh, there are two things two different rows yeah? two additional rows that you need to create which is total cash balance which is net cash flow plus starting cash balance Okay, this plus this you get the total cash balance yeah? right this is your cash balance okay then you minus the minimum cash balance in order to compute the surplus or deficit yeah? now this is just a working yeah? uh, cash budget meaning this is not the final cash budget yeah? this is work in progress cash budget the actual final cash budget will look different yeah? because this will include uh, financing as well as investment of surplus cash yeah? but here we assume that uh, we do not do anything with the surplus or deficit yeah? we just want to uh, ignore the deficit and uh, we don't do anything yeah? we just uh, take note of the deficit and surplus we don't adjust the deficit or the surplus yeah? so we take this as your total cash balance minus the minimum cash balance you know that you have excess yeah? so if it's positive it is surplus if it is negative then you have deficit yeah? now this deficit needs to be covered yeah? even this surplus can be addressed by investing yeah? surplus cash into uh, short-term investments yeah? to earn some uh, return or yield okay but we ignore that for the moment we here our intention is to see just the surplus or the deficit yeah? the amount and uh, in each quarter okay for example here we know that for the first quarter the company will have a surplus cash of 138 million yeah, or more million yeah. for the second quarter the company will have a deficit of 37.5 million third uh, quarter will have a deficit of 11.6 million yeah. and the fourth quarter will have a surplus of 110 million this is with the provision that this surplus or deficits are not addressed earlier. Yeah? This, this uh, deficit is not addressed, therefore there is a deficit in the third quarter. Yeah? So for example, if this deficit in the second quarter is addressed, then this deficit may, may disappear. Yeah? All right, we have not come to that yet. Yeah? So here we assume that the deficit or the surpluses in the previous quarter or in other quarters are not adjusted for or not addressed yet okay so this is uh, how you get this yeah? so how you get the surplus on a deficit you take the total cash balance minus the minimum cash balance so here the total cash balance is this because your net cash flow would be negative plus the starting cash balance from here is the starting cash balance therefore your total cash balance will be 12.5 which is lower than your minimum cash balance yeah? it's still a cash balance but it's less than minimum therefore you have a deficit you need to borrow yeah? if you want to maintain this 50 million you need to borrow 37.5 million yeah? ignoring that okay we assume that